New Covenant Center can do it. We're not focused upon no other church in town. We're just focused upon this particular part of the body of Christ because we're, we're simply uh, members that's a part of the whole. And uh, we have our job and we, have our, we will have our uh, directions and stuff and what he wants us to do. And we need to do it with all that we can. We already know that uh, uh, many things that we are supposed to do just on a daily basis is already written in the Word. Amen. If, if you come up on somebody who has need of something and, and you happen to have that and you feel the Lord say, I want you to help them, then you're supposed to help them. That's called almsgiving. We're supposed to, that's always a ready uh, thing to do. Amen. It's always good to bless. And there's all, all kinds of stuff that I want to get into that part. But I want to just to, to make a bold statement here that we can. Amen. Now, we, those who talk negative can't. Those who talk negative can't. Those who talk positive in faith can. How many cans have we got in here? I'm a can-do guy, amen? Uh, Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now, I qualify that. I can. Can you? Now, I can. I can boldly proclaim I can do all things through Christ who strengthens Dennis. You see, I can't look into your heart, so I don't know what you... Come on, amen. But here, what we're going to tell, you can tell the ones who can because you see the fruit of it. Yeah. Amen. And then Mark 9, 23 said, Jesus said to him, if you can believe all things are possible to him who believes. So we, we see the fact that, uh, God, that we're getting our strength from Christ and we see the reason that we can do all things uh, through him who believes? You've got to be a believer for things to happen for you. If you say, you know what, I, I'm going to do this. I just don't believe it's going to happen, but I'm going to do it. I just don't believe it's going to happen. It ain't going to happen. Right. Amen. Because you you are choking yourself to death by your own words. For with your words, you're justified. And with your own words, you're condemned. Amen. And so, you know, we reap what we sow, and what we sow with is our mouth. And that's the seed. Whether it's a negative word or a, or a positive word, we need to really be careful and we need to, to plant some seeds that we know that God will bless. Mark 10, 23, 27, very familiar to most of us. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were astonished at his words, but Jesus answered again and said to them, children, how hard it is for those who trust in riches to enter the kingdom of God. So he, he qualifies this. He put, brings it to a point where he gives some purpose to his words. It's those who trust in riches cannot enter into the kingdom of God. It don't matter if you just trust in football. You're not going to get in the kingdom of, of God. Amen? If you just trust in, in your own ability to do whatever you think you can do, you, I'm, I'm a guy, I'm tough, I don't have to go to church and I don't have to do that, and you're trusting in that, you're trusting in your own abilities, then uh, you're going to find you're not going to be able to get into the kingdom of heaven. Amen? Because it goes back to the fact that you're not a believer. You're not believing it. You're not believing what the Word said. But we go further. And he said, It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And they were greatly astonished, saying among themselves, who, who then can be saved? You know, he's talking about rich people. Here, a lot of poor folk were around him. Then they was all thinking, well, if the rich can't be saved, well, then who can be saved? So you can see their mentality was thinking, you know, them folks that's got money, there's no doubt God going to let them in because he needs their wealth. <laughs> Uh, amen? No, no, it don't work quite that way. Uh, you know, uh, I think his pastor was, I think, he, I either heard that this morning or whatever, I think he was talking about, uh, uh, it might not have been him, but I heard this, this word kept coming over my head of something, and I heard, it's like if God gives you $1,000, you know, pretty good chunk a little, just to some of us, gives you $1,000, God has not diminished his account. He hadn't lost nothing. None. He, he doesn't miss that. That's right. He didn't need it to begin with. So if he gave you a million dollars, God didn't miss it. 
I mean, it's like, again, sticking your finger in the ocean and pulling it out and seeing what kind of hole you left. Huh? You know, here we are. We're going to the throne room, believers, uh, and we're, oh, God. God, you know, I need $500, and I got to have $500. You know, we're almost ashamed to go ask God for $500. Well, why are we ashamed to go ask a God that you can't, you can't take anything away from him? You can't take anything away from God because he's already standing there trying to give it to us. Yeah. Amen. So if you, he, oh, I better, I better move on. I don't get hooked right there. But oh, well. Then he went on and said, he said after he said, uh, who, who then can we say? But Jesus looked at them and said, with men, it's impossible. And I, I saw this in a light I've never saw it, saw it before. But not with God, for with God all things are possible. And the first, this is the first time I've ever seen this, this, this uh, definition or perspective to my eyes. When he said that, but Jesus looked at them and said, with men, it's impossible. What's impossible to men? They can't be saved. It's not possible for a man to be saved apart from man. I mean, he knows it takes another man, believing in another man who died on, on a cross and was buried in a tomb and rose on the third day. It takes God to save us. Men can not save themselves. Can I hear an amen? It's only by the grace of God through faith in him and his word can a person be saved. So how are we saved? By God, through the Lord Jesus Christ, by our faith and by the grace of God that's in him. So I can see what he was saying there when he said it's impossible. With men it's impossible. With men it's impossible to be saved. And how many times have you talked to somebody, a witness to somebody and say, well, you know, I, I've thought about going to the church, and I've thought about uh, accepting them a little bit. He said, I'm, I, I just can't. I just can't do it because, you know, I, I'm going to wait till I am perfect. When, when I know that I know, I'll be able to do it without letting him down. You'll, they'll never get saved. Amen? Amen? Because there's nobody in this room right in here right now that hadn't let him down somehow, some way. Amen? Amen? We don't go around uh, wanting to do that or trying to do that, but we still do that. And when we, all of us, I guarantee you, everybody in here, including myself, there's times we, we just want to go and we just feel like we need to confess our sins. You don't, you don't even, you know, listen, you're not even condemned. You have no conviction on something. And you just think, you know what, I don't want to pray. You go to pray and the first thing you do is in there saying, Lord, forgive me my sins. Because you just know that you, well, what is that? Well, that's a lack of faith. Hello? You know how a lot of Christians have a hard time saying that I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus? Hmm? Now, I'm just no sinner saved by grace. Well, if that's what you believe, boy, I wouldn't want to die in that. I'm the righteousness of God because he's coming after them who are righteous. Amen. Who believe they're righteous. Who believe that the blood of Jesus Christ cleansed them from all of their sins. Washed them. They're gone. They're new creatures in Christ Jesus. Come here and amen. <coughs> well, what, is, what else is this saying to us? It's asking questions. If these rich people couldn't say, get saved, he said, what have I done in the past that the blood of Jesus can't wash clean? Anybody ever have thoughts of yesterday? We look back at the memories of the past and we let them get us down. Why? They're not there. If, if God said he moved them as far as the east is from the west, he put them in the depths of the sea, they can't even get to the bottom of the sea because they won't let them. Huh? They've sent a lot of craft down there. They've come back. <laughs> you know, they don't tell them what's down there. I ain't wanting to go down there to find out. A little bit too dark. Amen. I can't. I forget what is it. Twenty over twenty eight thousand feet in some places of the of the sea that they can. That's that deep. Twenty eight to thirty thousand feet to the very very bottom, and you know, that's a long ways. Low five thousand uh, five thousand feet to. For a mile, 5,280 feet to a mile, so you're going, you're going five, five, six 
mile, seven miles deep? Huh? Wow. Oh, I, I tell you, he, when Pastor read the scripture this morning, and he talked, uh, 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 talked about the, the, the new heaven and the new earth. And, and uh, he's, he read over there in Genesis that uh, how had God had, had, you know, built. Uh, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, you know. And then, and the next thing you know, it's flooded. Well, over there in Revelations, he says he's building a brand new one, and there will be no more seas. You have to understand there was seas <coughs> when Adam was created. Huh? The earth was totally flooded between Genesis 1, 1 and 1, 2, right? Sure, there's been seas here for a long time, but when he first built this earth, there wasn't any. Sin got a hold of this earth. Lucifer got a hold of this earth. And God destroyed it with a flood. But when he, when he took the flood away, there was seas, big bodies of water that was out there. And I'm thinking, oh, Lord, that, that means that before them seas was here, there was a time when there wasn't no seas here. Huh? You know, my mind goes way back. But I don't want to go back any farther. I want to go forward because this celestial city we're headed for, this new heaven and this new earth that we are uh, living for that's inside of us, eternal life, the, the, the guarantee of being a part of that lives inside of us. And I'm saying that we can maintain ourselves until Jesus comes. We can do it. Got any, got any takers here tonight? We can do that. We can hang on. Praise God. What thing is there in my life that the Father God can't fix? What are you hanging on to that God can't fix? Well, I've been praying, but he ain't never fixed it yet. Huh? Well, what have you prayed? Well, I asked him, but he didn't do it. Well, that's not faith. I'm telling you what, some folks don't understand, but their unbelief works real well. The opposite thing of faith is unbelief. It's doubt. And if you doubt, James said, that man will receive nothing from the Lord. So, you know, why don't you start using your faith as well as you've used your doubt in the past? And start believing things. Amen? Yeah. Praise God. I think I got a penny down there in my pocket in 2015. I've been teaching on the offerings of the Lord. But, you know, right there, that's just the first, that's a 10% of a dime. The tithe is a 10%, so if I give a, a penny out of my dime, thank God, I've got 90 left. See, if I give the penny to God, he'll bless the nine. Amen. If I give him a dollar, he'll bless the nine dollars. If I give him a, my $99 uh, or the one dollar, he blesses the nine. If, if I give the 10, he'll bless the, the, uh, uh, the, the 90 and, and so forth and so forth. And the idea of, of honoring God and trusting God, and I'm going to know about, about you, it takes faith. So for a lot of us to be true tithers unto the Lord. And uh, some of us just don't have the faith to do that. You say, well, I just don't know why I can't do it. Because you don't have faith. You have fear. Hello? Yeah. You have fear. Man, if I give this, I can't make it. Well, God done fell off the throne again. I mean, I mean our Father... He wants us, listen, this is why this Bible is like it is. He wants us to depend upon him. He, and if you're not, if you're deciding you can take care of it better than God, then you're depending upon yourself. Take another look at your bank account. How well is it working? You know what, and if you're the bucket plunker kind of person that slams it in there and says, well, here it is, God. You ain't getting nothing out of that. I don't know about you, but you ain't going to no, get no return over planting your, your seed back there in the wood box. That, that's not where you're sowing your, your seed. Where are you sowing your seed at? You're sowing it from the spirit side of it, and you're giving it. The Bible says men here who receive the tithe that die, he said, but there he receiveth them in the heavens. So when I'm giving, I'm giving to the Lord. I want to move on from that right there. But that's what it is. So why are people afraid to trust the Lord for anything? When he's telling us right here, all things are possible to him that believes. Right. Amen. Hmm? Glory to God. 
That's one thing for sure. You know, if you got seed and grain, you got harvest coming. If you're just hang with it and take care of things, amen. amen. Praise God. And you know, when, when you come, finally come to the realization you don't need everything, and your warner cannot be satisfied. Want, 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 want. Y'all get around these kids and tell me what they wanted. You know, they opened one present and said, I need, give me another one. Keely said the other day after we opened all the presents, he said, Papa, can I get my money and go to town tomorrow so I can get me another present to open? <laughs> I said, no. You know, she's saving up her, saving up her money. <coughs> she needs to get her a new swing set because we haul that, 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 that was given to us. My gosh, I don't even know how many years ago that, that was. But anyway, Genesis 18, 12 through 15, the NLT. We can do this. We can do this. We can do what? Anything. Anything. All things. Amen. So she laughed silently to herself and said, How could a worn out woman like me enjoy such pleasure, especially when my master, my husband, is also so old? <laughs> then the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh? Why did she say, Can an old woman like me have a baby? Is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return about this time next year and Sarah will have a son. Sarah was afraid. So she denied it. She was afraid. Fear will cause you to lie. Fear will prevent you from sowing your seed like God wants you to sow it that you may be able to receive. Amen. Saying, here's how she did not. I didn't laugh. You see, she laughed within herself. But we're talking about the Lord outside the tent. Huh? And notice, he didn't kill her. He didn't stop her from having the baby. He said, but the Lord said, no, you did laugh. <laughs> That was the love of God. That was grace right there. That was mercy right there on the spot, you know. Tell me something, church. Uh, what happened that time, about that time, the next year? And it, not only that, that old, that old woman who had a worn-out old husband, she had a, a, a baby. And that worn-out old husband... Messed around after she died and had and got married and had six more kids. I could see him when he died. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you had to read these guys before the age limit changed and see so and so had lived so many hundred years and then he had a child. <laughs> You know, they started having kids after 300 years. So I'm thinking, boy, I'm some good old days back in them days. <laughs> wow. Numbers 11, 18, 23. When I read this Bible, I'm, I, I see so many amazing things in it. And our life right now, all, all of us in here, you know, the Lord cherish this year. Some of us not be alive this time next year. Amen? But think about this. This is... Our life down here, Pastor, ain't much more than a blink. When you compare it to eternity, Brother David, you're not going to have to work much longer, even if you got to work to 120. Right. That is nothing. We're just here for a, just a... Uh, he's just shaping us into his sons and daughters he wants us to, to be. Glory to God. I'm glad I'm in the, I'm in the mold, molding business. I'm the mold. <laughs> he's the molder. Glory to God. And he said, and say to the people, verse 18, purify yourselves, for tomorrow you will have meat to eat. I mean, we're looking at the integrity of God here, a God who, who can do anything. He said, you were whining, and the Lord heard you when you cried. Oh, for some meat, we were better off in Egypt. Now the Lord will give you meat, and you will have to eat it. And it won't be for just a day or two or for five or ten or even twenty. You will eat it for a whole month until you gag and are sick of it. Wow. 
For you have rejected the Lord who is here among you. NCWC, New Covenant Worship Center, that same God is here among us and we can do it. Woo, I say here. He said, who's among you? And you have whined to him saying, why did we ever leave Egypt? Listen to this crazy response. But Moses responded to the Lord, while there are 600,000 foot soldiers here with me, and yet you say, I will give them meat for a whole month? Even if you butchered all our flocks and herds, would that satisfy them? Even if we caught all the fish in the sea. I mean, if they could just catch that big whale swallowed, John had fed the whole bunch for a long time. Would that be enough? Then the Lord said to Moses, Has my arm lost its power? Now you will see whether or not my words come true. And if you go on and read the story, you're going to find out they got sick. I mean, they had no meat, and then by the next day, the Lord had caused a great wind and blew all the way from the oceans and all around, and they woke up in the morning, and they had quail knee-deep to a giraffe. I'm telling you, God, don't listen, folks. Come on, come on, come on. Let's, let's, let's use our faith in 2015. Let's let Jesus Christ use us and let us build the church like God wants us to. Listen, we, and we can't do it if we're not faithful. I mean, yeah, we have services Sunday morning and Sunday night, and some are not coming, but I'm here. I'm not focusing on the ones that's not coming. Uh, but I know what God has said, and I believe the prophecy that Brother Savell said, there are things going to happen, and when they start happening, people will come to the house of God. They're going to come seeing what God does, not what we do. We can't do nothing without him. <laughs> nothing. Not a thing can we do without him. Huh? Is he coming? Do we know exactly when he's coming? Do we know when we're going to leave suddenly? I mean, what are we going to do? You know, well, I was listening to somebody who was planning about trying to make their plans for a vacation in 2015, and, and while they were talking about that, I said, yeah, we want to do that this year because we want to do this in 2016. Hey, honey, he says, don't even take thought about tomorrow. Right now, now faith is. How many souls did you win in 2014? How many souls did you individually go up to and walk and talk to them and win them to the Lord Jesus Christ? Aren't we all supposed to be soul winners? Hmm? Well, that, you know why a lot of folks haven't, didn't win anybody in 2014? They didn't try. You know why they didn't try to? They are afraid to. What if I say the wrong thing? Well, what if you say the right thing? If you'll be led by the Spirit of God, He'll tell you. He'll tell you. Well, what, I don't know how to tell them about Revelation. Don't. Talk to them about Jesus. Start your conversation out in the right way in 2015. Hey, did you know God loves you? That's number one. Did you know God loves you? You look at somebody just literally, miserably wrecked, and you can say, Hey, do you know God loves you? Hmm? In an average time, somehow or another, in an average time, if you do it and follow, listen, when you're led by the Spirit of God, it won't take you more than 10, 15 minutes to lead somebody to Jesus Christ. You say, well, I don't know what's happened to them. That ain't none of your business. You just pray for them, and you, you lead them to the Lord. You invite them to your church. If they're in another city, try to point them toward maybe a church you may know about that. You know, uh, but pray for them, and then you're going to have to believe God that God's going to take that, that new vessel. And how many knows that he knows how to take care of sheep? He knows how to, to deliver the, 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 the godly, amen, out of trouble sometimes. He can lead them. And so we, we find in, uh, where did I get to there? I think I got all through that. Uh, Romans 3, 38 and, uh, through 39, and I'm not r really far from being done here. He, Paul said, I'm persuaded for I am persuaded. That says something, didn't it? It's talking to me. I 
am persuaded that neither death nor life <laughs> death not going to separate me life ain't going to separate me nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present or things to come nor high nor death nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God. What's he what's talking about separating us from? God or the love of God? Love of God. God loves us. Church, he loves you. And if you're trying to believe God and ask things from God for things to help you to believe that he loves you, you ain't never going to get that done. He's saying, I love you. I don't care what you've done. I don't care how messed up you've been. I'm here trying to get you in because I love you. He, he, he loved us and he sent his son for us while we were still in our sins. And we have accepted Christ and we've come out of those sins and we're, and we're daily, progressively uh, being molded into that, to that person in the image of the Lord Jesus Christ, but we have not arrived yet. Even Paul said he had not yet comprehended. He hadn't got there yet. He's still working on me. Anybody here he's still working on? Still working on me. But you know, you need, you need to listen to your spirit man in here because sometimes we get to doing things that we ought not be doing, and all the time the Lord's trying to tell us, you know, not do, you don't need to be doing that, and you need to listen because if you don't listen to that, you're you're going to sear your conscience over as with a hot iron. Hello, and what you're going to create is a blessing blocker. So we've got to be sensitive for Him to speak to us. You can't be led by the Spirit of God if you ain't listening. You got to hear Him to be led by Him. Can I hear an Amen? Come on. Yeah, I, 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 give me a better amen than that. You got, you got to hear him to be led by him. And he does talk. Boy, I don't know about you, but he talks to me all the time. Amen. Why? I give him my ear. Yes. I want to hear. He that had an ear, let him hear. Yes. <coughs> he said, uh, notice that all this cannot separate us from the love of God, get this, which is in Christ Jesus. This love is in Christ Jesus. Tell me, who in Ephesians, who did he tell us that we were in? In Christ Jesus. Where is Christ Jesus seated? At the right hand of the Father. Where are we seated? At the right hand of the Father. How can we do that? Because of the love of God. That's how much he loves us. He's got his eye on us. He's targeting us. He, every day, 24 hours a day, he's he, he's really wanting us to sow good words. He really wants us to be doing fruitful, good deeds. But listen, don't go around just doing something good. Be led by the Spirit of God concerning the things that you are doing. <coughs> so, Matthew 21, 20, uh, uh, 21 through 22. So Jesus answered and said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but also you say to, if you say to this mountain, if you say to the mountain, the problem or whatever it is, be removed, be cast into the sea, it will be done. And whatever things, whatever things you ask in prayer, I mean, you can go and do what you think is prayer, but ain't prayer. If you're praying for things that are that's being asked amiss of, you're not in prayer. Now, if you're going to ask God for something, you need to have something that lines up with his word and his will. Does he want you to have healing? Does he want you to have hell? Does he want you to have wealth? Yes, he does. For, and whatever things you ask in prayer, believing, you will receive. Or you will take. I believe it. When you ask God for something, believe it's done. If you've asked God for something and you know that he receives it, John says he does, then we know that we have the petition we desire for him, then what should be our attitude? It ought to be an attitude of joyful thanksgiving. 
because I know that I've already received the very thing that I asked him for because I believe he heard me. And if I believe he heard me, then I know he'll give it to me. Amen. Amen. So I just thank him till he manifested. Yeah. Huh? Don't you think he might know when to deliver it? I believe most of the time he delivers it at a time that he'll get the most glory and praise out of it. He'll wait till he gets you totally out of the way so you can't say that you had any part about it. So why don't we just go ahead and wise up and understand that and, and get out of his way sooner. Amen? So I say to you, Luke 11, 9, uh, so I said to you, ask and it will be given to you, seek and you shall, it will find, knock and it will be opened to you. Is that positive or what? This is the master trying to teach you something. So, so, so I say to you, ask, it will be given. Seek, you'll find. Knock, it will be open to you. Amen? Amen? For everyone, well, that took your excuse. Well, he'd do it for you, but he wouldn't do it for me. For everyone who asks, receives. Hmm? How are you asking? In faith, believing. In prayer, believing in faith, and receive it. Amen? And he who seeks, finds... And to him who knocks, it will be open, open, open. But if you sit around in fear, thinking, listening to those other little voices that come in here to come in and steal the word away from you, I'm giving you some word tonight. They'll come behind and they'll try to, to trick you and get you right back in your old fleshly, carnal way. Folks, we're living far too carnal. We need to be a whole lot more spiritual we need to be realizing that we are a spirit we have a soul but we live in a body and our body is not saved it's not born again it still likes its own fleshly ways it don't want to mind the spirit of man so we need to learn how that if we're going to do it we're going to have to do it as a spirit person who's in charge of our soul and in our soul all all the decisions we make is made in our soul so we can do it we can do it do what anything the lord wants us to do Everything the Word teaches us we should do and anything you have true faith to do. So do we have an excuse? According to the Word, <laughs> we need to get so much more joyful about what we've done. So much more joyful about our giving. Amen. You say, well, but I can't give great big amounts. But if you're giving from what you have, isn't that all the ask? Right. You know, if, if a millionaire gives, uh, a multimillionaire gives a million dollars and a, and a person who has only $100 gives $10, he's given as much as that millionaire gave right. in God's eyes. And I'm telling you something, that's where you start at. Man. You start knowing, stop comparing what you're doing with everybody else. You just get it right between you and God. Watch God build you. Let God grow you. Don't sit around and complain or look at everybody else and say, oh, woe is me. Just look at yourself and say, from now on, I know according to God's word, not Brother Bradley, not Brother Buller, not Brother Bass, I, I know according to God's holy words, I can. I can. And not only I can, but I decree I am will. I mean, I want to do something for God in 2015. Amen? Praise God. Did you get anything out of this tonight? He will heal me. The older I get.